Today on Old Bob's Old Type Writers, let's take a look at a 1968 Royal Custom Portable brought in for basic cleaning and repairs. I'll also go over the general use of this typewriter. Welcome to Old Bob's Old Typers, a subseries part of the New Things New Tech channel. I'm Scott Drudge. Find out more typewriter related content on this typewriter and others on Old Bob's Old Typewriters.com or this YouTube channel's typewriter playlist. The customer brought in two typewriters for me to clean up and repair if needed a 1966 Brother Webster XL500, which I'll cover in another video, and this 1968 Royal Custom Portable. This Royal Custom has two original manuals included in the case. It's always great to have a manual with your typewriter. I'll post copies of these up on the Old Bobble typewriter site. I've taken a quick look over this typewriter and found a few things that need some care. First, it's a bit dirty and has a slight odor. It needs a new ribbon and fixing a few issues. It looks like the Royal Custom typewriter had been dropped a time or two and knocked out some screws out of position. The back plastic carriage slide covers are not mounted right. The left frame outer casing isn't mounting right, and we can see that the screw below the casing is messed up. Looks like it was slightly broken here as well. The platen rod on the left side appears to be bent, causing the spacing gear to wobble when you turn it. The variable spacing button is missing completely from the left side. It's not affecting the typewriter too much from what I can tell, so I might just leave it as is. The right card guide is out of place. It just seems to have popped out of the clip over here. Overall, this typewriter is in pretty good working condition, but it just needs some TLC. I'll start off by giving this a good cleaning. I started by cleaning the basics. The keyboard had a lot of dirt and who knows what else on it. Using Simple Green, I cleaned off all the keys and surrounding area. I took the typewriter outside and flushed the segments with lacquer thinner. The lacquer thinner needs to be used in a well-ventilated area and you have to be careful not to get any on any of the painted surface or can eat the paint away and cause more issues. The platinum rollers underneath were not all that dirty, but I ran some alcohol over it a few times and cleaned off any old ink and whiteout that was found. Both the platinum rollers are in pretty good condition and don't appear to be getting hard yet. The case just needed some general cleaning to remove dirt and grime. The typefaces took a bit longer, about an hour using alcohol to remove the ink residue, scrubbing with a wire brush, and then picking out any of the dry ink in any of the areas that the brush was unable to pick out. A bit more scrubbing and cleaning to get a cleaner type. The rest of the typewriter frame just needed some basic cleaning with cloth and simple green to remove miscellaneous dirt. The carriage knob had a bit of old residue on it, but that cleaned up nicely. Next, the tasks of fixing anything that wasn't working correctly. Several of the type bars were still sticking after flushing the segments out. So I went through one by one, cleaned out all the segments, and tweaked any type bars that needed adjustment. I ran through each key several times, both in uppercase and lowercase. Some type bars would stick in uppercase and not in lowercase. So more tweaking, cleaning, and adjusting seemed to fix them all up. Before cleaning, the type test showed several faces that appeared more filled in, and so those were cleaned out one by one. After cleaning, all appeared to be sharper and cleaner. During inspection, I noticed the platinum rod appeared to be bent, causing some wobble in the left knob. I pulled the platinum rod to see if it could be realigned and tweaked a bit. Overall, it really doesn't seem to be affecting the mechanics of the machine. The ratchet gear, platinum turning, and all typing action seems fine. Removing the cover, I found that the left containing clip is missing on the inner piece. The right side is working as expected. So the cover is slightly loose on the left side, but it isn't really affecting anything, so the cover is staying in place. The left magic meter is clipped in as expected, but the right one was out of place. It was just a simple matter of popping this back into place behind the retaining clip. Both float slightly above the platen as expected. The left rear frame had been damaged from being dropped. The far left rear screw mount had been broken up one time. I added a lock washer to grab the frame a bit better. Not the prettiest looking fix, but it will hold the casing together better than before. The carriage still moves freely and we can see some other scrape marks in the back where the typewriter had been dropped. The minor repairs are done that can be done, so time to replace the ribbon and test out the typewriter. The existing right spool is a smaller portable typewriter spool, with the bottom half of the spool missing. The ribbon holder is designed to be squeezed in and allow easy ribbon removal. 
The right spool is a standard 2 inch metal spool. The ribbon is very dry and no longer useful on this typewriter. It's easy to remove the ribbon from the ribbon guides. The replacement ribbon is part of a two pack with two inch universal spools with a half inch cloth ribbon. There's a black red ribbon and an all black ribbon. For now, I'll just use the black ribbon and save the black red for later use. Each ribbon is individually sealed in the main package which should help maintain the ink on the unopened ribbon. Before installing the ribbon, we need to spool part of the ribbon onto the right spool past the metal eyelet. The eyelet is used for auto-reversing the ribbon once it hits the ribbon guide. Next, it's just an easy task of dropping the ribbon in the left, then through the ribbon guide, through the ribbon vibrator, closing the prongs, through the right ribbon guide, and dropping it in the right spool. We can easily test the ribbon movement by spinning it back and forth, testing the auto-reverse, and manually testing the reverse mechanism. All seems to work as expected. Replacing the cover, we're ready to go over the features and get to typing. You will find it easier to type on your new Royal Custom because it's the only portable with these exclusive features. Magic Margin. Magic Column Set. Magic Meter. If you have it, a twin pack 10 second ribbon change. Touch Control. New fingertip control panel. And it's also the quietest Royal Portable ever built. Believe it or not. So the standard keyboard on this Royal Custom has a complete 88 character keyboard, a full size keyboard. So all typewriters load pretty much the same way. You're going to insert the paper behind the cylinder and place the left edge of the paper against the paper guide. Turn either the left or right cylinder knob until the paper appears under the magic meter. The paper guide is supposed to act like a straight edge and permit the paper to insert absolutely straight, but usually it doesn't work that way, unless you're really lucky. If necessary to adjust the paper, pull the paper release lever forward and adjust the paper and pull back the paper release lever. Magic margins. Once you're ready to start typing, you can set your left and right margins. Notice in this case the left margin is all the way left to about zero. Space over and move the carriage over to where you want the left margin. Press the left magic margin button and voila! The left margin is now set to that space. So every time you press the return bar, the carriage will only return to this location. To set the right margin, move the carriage to the left. It's easiest to use the carriage release button and move the carriage to the left. If the carriage stops at the margin end before where you want it to be, press and hold the right magic margin button and continue to slide the carriage left. This will move the right margin to where you need to position. Same goes for if you want to move the right margin to the left. Just hold down the right magic margin button while holding in the carriage release. Next, set your line spacing to the desired number of lines in between each carriage return. Setting the line spacing to 1 will only advance one line at a time as you hit the carriage return. One here. Setting the line spacing to the line between 1 and 2 will only advance the line one and a half times. This can be helpful if you're typing on a different type of ruled paper. Two. Setting a line spacing to two will advance two lines each time you hit the carriage return. For line spacing to different lines, you could use the variable line spacer on a typewriter. But this particular typewriter is missing this variable line spacer. I didn't have a spare to fix this typewriter, but it's really not necessary. There are other ways to get around this. Many typewriters have a gauge on the left side, which is the line meter. The line meter when set right will automatically tell you how many lines of typing space you have left when getting near the bottom of a page. To start, turn the carriage until the set for the paper size you will be using matches up the line meter arrow. In this case, we're setting 11 inches. Insert your paper. As you type, you will see the meter tells you how many inches are left until you get to the bottom of a page. Here I draw a line to show approximately the 2 inch mark on the gauge, then the 1 inch mark as seen on the gauge. When you see the end mark on the gauge at the arrow mark, this indicates that you're at the bottom of the page. Yeah. See? The bottom of the page lines up with the red magic line guide. So pretty accurate. The ribbon color selector switch allows you to choose between red, black, and stencil mode. Red mode will use the top of the ribbon and black will use the bottom. Stencil will not move the ribbon up and down and allow you to cut stencils with your typewriter. Stencils create a negative in wax paper, which is used in mimeograph machines to make multiple copies of typed documents. The margin release button allows you to move your carriage past the set margins. 
This could be useful for completing a word or other typing in the margin areas. The magic column set button sets the tab positions along the carriage. Move the carriage to where you want a tab position and press the magic column button. Column clear is used to unset any tab. Simply tab to an existing tab setting and press the column clear button. To clear all tabs, simply hold the column clear button in and move the carriage from one margin to the other. The position gauge located below the ribbon vibrator in the center shows you the exact position of the typing point on the paper. The line finder button allows you to return to a line Gage. being typed on. Say you want to write something with a subscript. You pull the lever forward, turn the carriage knob slightly, type your character, then push the lever back and the carriage will return to the main typing line. The touch control is a way to set how sensitive the typing action is. When set to high, you need to press the keys harder than when set to low. This allows you to set the typewriter to your style of typing. Next to the touch control is a backspace button which simply backs up the carriage one space at a time. The paper table is where you can use an eraser or whiteout to cover up any mistyped stuff. Eraser fluff is notorious for gumming up typewriters. Using the Spic Whiteout is a much better choice in my opinion. That's it for this 1968 Royal Custom Typewriter. It came in in fair condition and just needed a few repairs, cleaning, and a new ribbon. You can see where I've cleaned it up and now it's looking pretty nice. The case is cleaned up a bit and a new ribbon is in place. Matter of fact, I've also included a red-black so that the customer can switch out from whichever type they would like. I've tested it and it's working well. This Royal Custom Portable Typer is a good find. I've seen these listed and sold on sites between 35 and 300 so far, but in far worse shape. I'd value this one at around $50 to $75 in its current edition. Maybe a bit more to the right buyer. I'm sure the owner will be very happy with this typewriter for years to come. Thanks for watching Old Bob's Old Typers. If you have a typewriter that you need some help with, send me a note. Check my site or other videos in my typewriter playlist. Check out my other videos on new things, new tech, and more on this channel.